Yo, what is up? Circuit Score here, and today I'm going to show you guys how to undervolt your 5090 the right way. And when I say right way, I've noticed that there's a lot of tutorials on YouTube that I've followed some of them myself, and I noticed that there's a very big issue with how some of these tutorials are showing people how to undervolt their graphics cards. And this is specifically for the 5090, but you could do the same process with other graphics cards as well. And by following some of these tutorials, you're actually not allowing your graphics card to idle, which is very important for power saving, especially if you're one of those people that just kind of like me keeps their computer on all the time. And even if you're not one of those people, you put your computer in sleep mode or you're just browsing the web casually, following one of these undervolt guides will not allow your GPU to idle correctly. All right, so let's get started here. So the first thing is, if you're not familiar, you will need MSI Afterburner. That is a program that is used to overclock and also undervolt your graphics card. And there's two versions here. There's a April 23rd version and then there's a beta. I think I am actually running the beta because it had a few more features for my AMD 9000 series CPU. So you can use either version, both should work fine. And once you have it installed, you should have an interface that looks similar to this. And the first thing I want to recommend is going into your settings here. And we can say start with Windows and you could also do start minimized. And we also want to make sure that this checkbox here, unlock voltage control is on. And then the next thing we want to do before we do any kind of undervolting. And this is another thing a lot of tutorials don't tell you, but see this little Windows icon here. We want to make sure to turn that off so that's not checked. So what that does is it applies one of your profiles, probably the first profile, if that's what you're going to be using to undervolt when you start your computer. I believe it's actually just the last profile you've used, but I always apply my overclocking and undervolting to the first profile here. So as you can see, I already have some of these settings set up, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually just reset everything here. And you can do that by hitting this button here. This resets all your settings back to factory settings. I'm gonna hit that just to make sure. It should already be set like that if you've never used this program before. And I like to use this fifth profile as like a default profile. So in order to save it, you can hit this save button. It'll ask you which profile. I'm gonna hit five. And then you can hit five again and then hit this checkbox. That just pretty much ensures that you've applied the settings. And we'll be doing that with our undervolt profile as well. All right, and the next thing here, we wanna go ahead and look at our curve editor. So I'm gonna pull this over here, open up the curve editor, and it's gonna bring up a screen that looks like this. Now I've actually edited my values so I can see all the entire curve essentially. Because when you start this by default, it cuts it off like about here and you can't actually see these very bottom frequencies. So in order to fix it so that you can see the entire graph, let's go ahead and close out of MSI Afterburner. And this is crucial so that we can apply the correct undervolt that I'm talking about here so that your GPU actually idles at the correct frequencies. So we're gonna go ahead and open up our C drive and then program files x86, MSI Afterburner, and make sure that it is closed, like I said. You won't be able to edit this otherwise. So this one here, the MSI Afterburner.cfg. We are going to go ahead and edit this. And in my case, I wasn't actually able to edit it within the program files. So I had to make a copy here. So I made a copy on my desktop. So let's go ahead and just edit this real quick. And it's gonna look like this. And what we're looking for is these two entries right here, the VF curve editor max frequency. And I've already set these, so I don't remember what the default settings were, but we'll want to change this to 3500 like I've done so here. And then this one here, the VF curve editor minimum voltage, we want to set that to 700. This will allow us to see all of the points on our graph. So go ahead and hit save. Close this out. And then I'm going to copy this file. You might be able to edit it within your program files. I seem to have some kind of permissions problem, but this is a way to get around it. So I'm going to hit paste and then just replace the file in the destination. Continue. Okay, and now it's replaced. 
And now when we relaunch MSI Afterburner, we can go to our curve editor and it'll look like this. You'll be able to see the minimum value of 700 and then goes all the way down to zero here and all the way up to 3,500 here. Now you can actually see like the full voltage curve. So first thing, we wanna make sure it is set to our default profile, which is five, hit okay. Do you know that this is the default voltage curve? And I'm gonna show you guys right now why some of these other guides are incorrect in the way that they're undervolting. So many guides will say at this 900, this is 0.9 volts. That's gonna be the undervolt. So they say a lot of times to take it from this 900 or even we're actually probably gonna be going to 895 this tutorial. But what they say to do is to click on one of these values, hold shift, and then bring this up to about like 2,830 or so. And then they recommend hitting shift Pulling this part over, pulling it down like this, hitting apply, and then it essentially brings that undervolt to the desired setting. However, the problem is now it pulled up the entire curve. So now you're idling at 1100 megahertz, as you can see here. So anytime your GPU is in any kind of idle state, its minimum frequency is always going to be 1,100 range. This says 1,087, which is not what we want. So that's the incorrect way to undervolt. And there are so many guides on YouTube. It's actually kind of amazing to me how many guides tell people to do it this way. So the correct way to do it is let's go back to our default profile, hit OK. And what we're going to do is we're going to want to hold shift from 820 to 895 like this so let's find that point on our graph here you can if you hit a point you can hit tab and you can go to the next point so 820 is this one here and then 895 is just going to be the one right below this 900 mark so here's 900 we want to go all the way to this one right before 900 so i'm actually going to go to this point prior so i can see what i'm doing here and then I'm going to hit shift and just highlight from 820 to 895 like this. And now we've got just this section of the graph highlighted. I'm going to go hit this point here. This is 895. And now we're going to click and hold and we're going to pull up on that point. It's going to pull up the entire section that we just highlighted. And in my case, the maximum at 895 megavolts for my card, every card's a little different, is it's going to stop me at 2917. But for a stable undervolt, we want to kind of stick to like 2800 and anywhere in that range, we'll just stick to like 2838. Probably start at 2800 and work your way up from there. So anywhere above that, so, you know, we could do 2838. And we want to keep it like this. Do not hit apply just yet. We're going to hit shift again, and we're going to highlight everything from this point over. And then just pull it down like this. And then hit this apply button. And now you can see we've got our flat undervolt here and we've kept our bottom points so we're still going to be idling at around 200 megahertz and then we still have the same undervolt with the same boost clock frequencies and if you want to push your boost clock a little higher you could actually go up a little bit higher on this to like 925 or even like 945 seems people could do like 945 and they've pushed it to around like 3000. I'm going for lower temperatures, lower fan noise with the same exact performance as stock is what I'm going for here, which is what this will do for you, this undervolt. And like I said, this is a pretty easy undervolt. Most 5090s should be able to handle this undervolt. So once we've done that, we've already hit apply because it's already set this curve. And the only other things we want to mess around with in these settings on MSI Afterburner is your memory clock. Most any 5090 should be able to do a plus 2000 on the memory clock. So, like I said, some may be a little different. Some you might actually have to 
pick it down to like 16 plus 1600 but just about any 5090 should be able to do plus 2000 and then the power limit my card i can only push up to 104 percent on the power limit because i have like a non-oc card and then once we've done all of that we can go ahead and hit apply and we have now successfully undervolted our card correctly and it'll still allow it to idle and this should give you even a little better performance with the boosted memory clock as well all right so doing a quick test here we are in riverwood this is a highly modified version of skyrim called nulvis i actually did a full showcase of this in my last video testing out the 5090 so as you can see after we've applied our undervolt we are now sitting around 66 degrees celsius with the fan going at about 50 percent i guess it says 48 percent and i have not set a custom fan curve yet i probably will do that in the future but what I did do from my last video is I switched over to the other BIOS. So the uh, performance BIOS, I guess you could say. They don't really change any of the clock speeds. All they really do is change the fan speeds. But as you can see, it's pushing around about 50% fan usage. And we're pushing up to like almost 70 now. Which, for a highly modified version of Skyrim like Nulvis, this is really good temperatures. This is probably the absolute best way to push your graphics card to the absolute max, is to load up a mod list like this that incorporates like 500 gigs of mods, most of them visual. A lot of quest mods as well, but still... It's a lot of visual mods, and I really love this. I do a lot of uh, mod list reviews on my channel, and I also do some PC performance tweaks and whatnot. So anyway, if you guys want to check that out, check out my last video, and that'll conclude this video. I just got this 5090, which I'm pretty stoked to start testing, so I'm going to definitely be doing a lot more videos testing out the 5090. So if any of that interests you, consider subscribing to the channel. And as always, have a wonderful day.